friend. You always smile. That is it. We have officially completed World at War. Anyway, hey guys, it's the SVN double one here. As long as you live, the heart of this army can never be broken. True. Things will change, my friend. As heroes, we will return to Russia's embrace. For what? Three months until we get stuck in the Arctic and almost die? Actually, most of us do die. Anyway, yeah, guys, it's the SVN one here. So as you guys know, I already completed the game, this final mission in co-op, but if you complete it in co-op, you don't get to see the ending scenes or the credits or anything else. So I'm going to be quiet and let you guys listen. The victory won in the West must now be won in the East. Obviously, the depiction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki being destroyed. Most of those were Russian. And actually, yes, Russians lost the most of anyone in World War II. I remember learning that back when we started in 8th grade. So, credits, I presume? Yes! Okay, that is the end of Call of Duty World of War. So I told you guys at the end of the last video that there would be another separate video for the credits and afterthoughts. So anyway, uh, after thoughts of Call of Duty World of War, well, originally I knew it was probably, I thought it was going to like piss me off a lot since it was World of War and typically one of the most hated campaigns in the series. But really, it wasn't that bad, and I know that part of the reason it wasn't that bad was because, well, I was working with uh, Brian Bill and LOL Net. The tags on YouTube are Bajoran HB2 and XX Power Echo XX, so definitely go check them out, although Bajoran, or, yeah, Bajoran does not have any videos. Echo's got uh, about 50 at the time this is being recorded. So anyway, I uh, just thought you guys make sure you go check them out, they're pretty awesome, and they are, and I decided to join and do this project with them, and yeah, that's pretty much it, I just decided to join and do the project with them, because those two both kind of wanted to do this project with me, and I didn't mind doing it, I knew it was going to be fun, so that's why I did it with them, it was actually a very fun project, I mean, it didn't take that long, it was only, this is only the 16th video, I mean, we only had... The, mo the biggest failure episode I know was uh, episode 14 at the uh, Outside the Rice Shag. And I do already have an extra video planned. It is, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's pretty epic. Anyway, so that's pretty much it. So, uh, in the World of War, really, the campaign wasn't horrible, but it wasn't that good, honestly. It really wasn't that good. Now, it was the first really in that really should have been called Mature. Because it had the most cursing, the most blood and gore of any game up until Black Ops, of course. So anyway, it was it wasn't a horrible game though. Of course, we all know what the uh, in the multiplayer the multiplayer gets bad on a lot. I'm not really sure why. It's not that bad of a multiplayer. It's better than Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops, or at least Black Ops, probably Modern Warfare 2. 
It's actually really good. I mean, it's fun. I mean, Martyrdom really isn't that bad, and neither is Last Stand in this game. Not as much as it is in Modern Warfare 2. So, anyway, the main thing, though, that I think saved this game, not necessarily saved, but helped the game a lot, and what completely saved Black Ops, for that matter, was the zombie mode. The zombie mode is so fun. I mean, it's what saved it. It spawned so many, it spawned, what, seven map packs to this day? Seven different zombie map packs over two games. It's, it's a good, it was a great choice to do. It was a great idea. I'm glad they did it. It was really important. So anyway, in the end, I would rate World at War about probably an eight out of 10, because I really don't think it's that bad. I think it's actually pretty fun. So I would rate it about an 8 out of 10. It's a good, it's a decent game. It's better than, it's better than Black Ops, definitely. Because Black Ops is a failure. And it's, in ways, it's better than Modern Warfare 2. But once again, nothing's ever going to come back and beat Call of Duty 4. Nothing will ever beat Call of Duty 4 in the Call of Duty series. It's not going to happen. Modern Warfare 3 isn't going to do it. Call of Duty 9 isn't going to do it. Nothing is. Call of Duty 4 will always be the greatest. I think anyone else can agree with me that Call of Duty 4 was the best. But still, it was an okay game, and it was actually a very fun project. It was one of my shortest projects, along with uh, Homefront, and Call of Duty 4 is one of my shortest projects. At least in number of parts, it's the second shortest. In length, I believe it's the third shortest. I'm not completely sure about that. The music's pretty cool too. And of course, zombies really helped it, just like zombies saved Black Ops. And that's pretty much it. So, future projects. Well, the time is going up. Destroy All Humans 2 is winding down, getting close to the end. Once Destroy All Humans 2 is over, we look forward to Uncharted 3. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a beast. It's gonna be blind, and it's gonna the first video is gonna come out. The afternoon or night the game comes out, I can't guarantee exactly when. Matt Lowe. That's interesting. We actually have a guy in my grade named Matt Lowe. Wow. Yeah, that's actually kind of weird. Okay. Anyway. So, what happened did... Okay, so then after that, at the same time, the day Modern Warfare 3 comes out, I'll begin posting videos of it as well. But Uncharted 3, knowing the length of Uncharted 2's campaign, Uncharted 3 will likely be... Three times the length of the Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3 campaign, excuse me. Even though I have heard it's supposed to have the number of lines of dialogue of 50 movies, I know I saw that on a gunshot, but I don't know if that's necessarily true, but I guess we'll see. That would be interesting though, it would be nice to have a longer Call of Duty game, because we haven't seen a really long Call of Duty campaign since... I don't know, like, I think it's still one of the, long the longest campaigns for Call of Duty 1 and 2. Call of Duty 3 wasn't that long. Call of Duty 4 was actually pretty short of a campaign, no matter how good of a campaign it was, though. It was actually fun. This campaign really isn't that long at all. Modern Warfare 2 is insanely short. It's probably the shortest of all. Black Ops. Black Ops has probably had the longest since the couple of original Call of Duties. And one of the better campaigns in the series. Probably the best since Call of Duty 4, in my opinion. Man, we're already running on nine minutes. Credits, it's a long credit scene. The music isn't as good as the credits of Black Ops. Anyway. Looks like it's almost over. Yep, special thanks. Additional development on Blowtorch and Corkscrew. Oh no, don't tell me now we have to watch Activision's credits too. Oh wait, yeah, we do have to do that. I think I remember at that happens in like every Call of Duty game that Activision's been in. It has like the primary developer and then it has Activision. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm running out of stuff to talk about. I mean, after those two projects though, we run into my longest, we're running into sort of a problem after that, is that, don't worry, I have plenty and plenty of games to do. The thing is, I'm trying to decide how I want to do Fallout 3, because I want to do it immediately after, because it's one of my favorite games of all time, and it's going to be one of my favorite projects. The problem is, with what I'm planning on doing, it's going to take anywhere from 130 to 170 parts. It's going to, even if the parts are running longer than 15 minutes, it's going to be a long project. 
Because I know that uh, when SSO did his walkthrough of Fallout 3, his ended up being about 130 parts. And he did do all five DLCs, but he did not do all side missions, and I plan on doing that. I guess the major difference, though, is that he did not... I'm trying to think of... Uh, his parts are always, like, less than 15 minutes. These are usually, like, 10 to 12, so... Maybe it won't be that as long as I can. Maybe it'll be close to 130 or so. But either way, that's a long time. And that's four months. If I'm posting every day, that's four months of video for one video a day. So it's going to be a long project. So I'm probably going to end up doing a side project with it. Probably a couple side projects during that time. More likely than not going to be uh, Destroy All Humans, Path of the Furon, Mercenaries Playground of Destruction, and Dead Rising 2 are probably going to be the three. Yes, I just got Mercenaries Playground of Destruction. It is awesome. Anyway. Come on, I'm getting bored here. It's already been 11 and a half minutes of credits. Well, more like... If you include the ending scene, it's been about 11 minutes of credits. Only about 30 seconds... Nah, there were about a minute of action. Oh, it does bring in the good music. I forgot about this part. It does bring in the good music from, uh, Black Cats. So, I guess, once again, thanks to all you guys who chose to watch this, uh, walkthrough. I know it wasn't one of my most popular ones, but it did pretty well. I mean, I have had some high view videos, not too many, but it's been fun. And I've really enjoyed doing the project, and it's, what, uh, 8 down? Yep, that sounds about right. With this and, uh, Destroy Humans 2 done, that's 8 projects down. With plenty more to come. So yeah, once again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for rating, commenting, subscribing because of it. You know, I know I probably haven't gotten to make subscribers because of this walk, because it's kind of old and there were enough walkers that have been on YouTube that were actually really good. So, I guess that's about it. Just listen to the rest of the music and credits. You know, I really have to go to the bathroom right now. I know that you guys don't care about that. I really have to do that, but I'm afraid that if I go, I'm going to end up missing the uh, important scene. That's the only reason I'm going through these credits, is for the ending scene. And I don't want to miss it. I've suffered through 14 minutes of credits, and it better be good. Actually, you know what, I should probably just save that line for the end of Modern Warfare 3. Because I know that at the end of Modern Warfare 2, you just got the picture of all the guys at the very end. Instead of, uh, like you just got the picture of all the guys at the very end. And yes, there was the museum level that you unlocked, but you couldn't go to it. You, could, you had to go back to the main menu to go to it. And I know that in, uh, what was it, uh, and then back in Call of Duty 4, of course, it cuts it straight to the, uh, airplane Mile High Club mission that most people have never beaten on Veteran. Because I know that, uh, who was it? Oh, my friends. It was, uh, Bajorn, actually. LOL. Who has, I believe, over 1,800 trophies. And he has not beaten that mission on Veteran. He's beaten this game on Veteran and the other two Call of Duty games on Veteran, but he has not beaten that last mission of Call of Duty 4 on Veteran. Neither have I. My friend Noah has with .01 seconds left. Ooh, it's almost over. Fifteen minutes, really? Semper Fi. Can't exactly remember what that stands for, but I know it's in the Marines. I believe it's like all together or something. I can't exactly remember. So, fifteen minutes. Call of Duty World at War is finally over. But why is there a bar at the bottom of the screen? What's going on here?
Why is there a plane crash and stuff walking toward me? Please tell me those guys are here to save me. Why is he running? Oh no, what's going on here? The introduction to Nazi zombies. Ooh ha ha. Yes, your reward for completing Call of Duty World at War is you unlock Nazi zombies! Nazi zombies is a survival mode where you have to kill zombies for points and survive as long as you can. Oh, no dolphin died. This is Nocter Unto Ten, the uh, original map for the zombies. This was the very first one. This was released in World of War. It was re-released in Black Ops with the either by ordering the Hardinger Prestige Edition of the game, which I actually ordered the Prestige Edition so I could get that awesome freaking RCXD car. It's really cool. You either had to do that. Oh, there's some zombies. Fail. You either had to do that or buy the Resurrection Pack. That's loud, too. So you have to do one of the two. And I got to download the Resurrection Pack for free since I bought the Prestige Edition. I guess the, the major difference between Zombies of World of War and Black Ops is that for the first, I believe, through Shino Numa, only a certain amount, only uh, 24 zombies can actually spawn per round. And actually, for the first few maps, like for, uh, for Nocturne 10, they cannot reach through the barriers and hit you, which was a really good thing. Yep, this is not. And on all the zombie maps, my highest ranks have been... Let's see. What was the last one? I see he's breaking in somewhere. Oh, hello. You're not so slow, even with tactical. But like, I know that the uh, slowest... Uh, excuse me. The, uh, my highest ranks in zombies have been uh, maybe 17 on Noct. I never really played Noct a whole lot. But, uh, I know that on Baruch it was only like 15 or something. Baruch is a hard map. And then on Shino Numa it is 39. I could have gone further, but I haven't ever... I haven't yet tried to do the, uh... Sort of the glitchy thing where you can, uh... Run a circle around the room. I've never actually tried to do that. I've gone... I've never tried it until maybe today, actually. And then Doris, I've made it to 30 in the Black Ops version. I've made it further in the Black Ops version. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed my walkthrough. To all, look forward to my next few projects. Okay, my grenade blew up. Why did I throw another one? What the heck? So, I'll see you guys for Uncharted 3 and Modern Warfare 3 just as soon as we finish Destroy All Humans 2. See you guys then.